Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for another C3. Um, I want to say hello and welcome to those of you who have joined us on Zoom and also special shout out to those who are joining us from HHCC. Um, I am also uh, very excited to join anyone else who is new to um, uh, the C3 Caregiver Community Connection. And this is going to be presented by the Elizabeth Dole Foundation, and it's also powered by our partners at Wounded Warrior Project. We're also very pleased to have the U.S. Department of Affairs, I'm sorry, U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs join us as partners for this series as well. So today, C3, Courage Through Counseling, we're going to be having a Q&A with Cohen Veterans Network, and it will be featuring Caitlin Thompson, Vice President of Community Partnerships with the Cohen Veterans Network. So before we get started, I do want to mention to all attendees that this is recorded and we will uh, have it available to you in the guides tab on HHCC as well as on our website. Also, we would love to hear your suggestions on future topics to discuss and speakers to feature. So if you have any ideas, please, please, please send them to us via hhcc.events forward slash ideas. So with all of that said, we will be taking questions toward the end, but please feel free to uh, pop those in the chat boxes as well. Um, we will also be taking these questions from the HHCC community via the comments uh, under this uh, live webinar. Uh, today's moderator, Megan, will be hanging out in the chat box. Uh, please also be sure to submit these questions using the Q&A box located in the Zoom control panel. Um, so once again, HHCC folks, please pop those questions in the comment section on the live feed. Today, we'll be selecting four winners from our webinar. Uh, these are gonna be participants in both Zoom and H HHCC during the episode. So to enter into this giveaway, all we ask is that you engage with us either in the comments in HHCC or within the chat box function within the Zoom panel. Um, so if you, if you are able to uh, become a winner in one of these giveaways, um, you'll be receiving a free $25 Amazon gift card and a very nifty Wounded Warrior Project journal. We will also be uh, experiencing a new, uh, a new doohickey that I'm very excited to test out. It's called Poll Everywhere during today's episode. Uh, so for Zoom participants, Megan will be dropping a link into the poll in the chat uh, for the poll into the chat. And then for HHCC participants, Colton's also going to be dropping a link in the comments. Um, so if you would like to participate in our polls, just utilize that link and follow the instructions. We'll also have that in the slide here momentarily. A recording from today's webinar will also be available, once again, in the unit section of HHCC, or you can check it out on our website at hiddenheroes.org forward slash C3. So today's C3 features closed captioning, if you do want to disable the closed captioning, you can do so um, with the live transcript button in the control panel and click disable auto transcription. It can be disabled at any time during the webinar if you find that you're not caring for that do doodad. Um, so without further ado, I'd like you to join me in welcoming Caitlin as we get started. Welcome Caitlin, thank you for joining us. Thank you so much, Shana. Hey, Megan, can you go back two slides to my picture? Because I feel like this is like the before pandemic, after pandemic, <laughs> like that's before and this is after. So um, just want um, <laughs> to struggle. acknowledge that <laughs> the struggle is real for all of us. The struggle, so. the struggle. <laughs> Anyway, I am so, so thrilled to be here. Um, I'm really, um, Elizabeth Dole Foundation has just been such an important partner for Cohen Veterans Network, and I really am thrilled to just talk about our services and how we can help. That's it. So thank you all for joining us. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Caitlin. I'm really excited that you agreed to um, come on and chat with us. I mean, I'm a huge fan of what you guys do. I'm a, a huge fan at how accessible you make mental health care. And I feel that it's benefited so many folks within our community um, and across the different military communities. So thank you for all that you do. Um, for those who may not be as familiar with uh, Cohen Veterans Network, 
what is it? <laughs> yeah. So we are celebrating our five year anniversary this year, which is really exciting. Um, we started five years ago. Um, Stephen Cohen, Stephen A. Cohen is a philanthropist who um, whose son actually served in the Marines and um, came his it was his 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 son who came home from um, from being deployed and said, Dad, like one of the things that we really need to help with across the country is um, is help our our veterans who may be struggling with um, with mental health problems. Um, I have to put in a a plug for our VA partners as well. I actually worked for VA um, for ten years, um, and I love VA. We love VA, and we are here to help to fill those gaps. So, um, and I'll talk a little bit more about how we're able to do that. But currently, we have nineteen clinics throughout the country. I'll show you where they are. Um, these are brick and mortar clinics. Um, and what we are looking to do is just, you know, provide high quality care to primarily post 9-11 veterans and military families. We are opening up our aperture to include, um, aperture to include all um, military uh, service members. That will be, a, a, a few of our clinics do that now. We're going to be opening this up in the next month or so and um, using TRICARE. And so we're super excited um, about being able to provide that care too. And we provide evidence-based care. So evidence-based means that we know that it works. I mean, that's basically it. Like um, it's based it's, on evidence. It's based on evidence. <laughs> it's based Good on figure. research. And so we treat um, a variety of mental health conditions. And we also treat things like relationship problems, um, grief. Um, uh, we treat children. Um, as well as teenagers, as well as spouses. Um, so anything uh, where we're able to really um, get in there early on, or even if somebody may be in a, a higher level of crisis, we're able to, to see those clients as well. That's incredible. So, I mean, that was gonna be one of my next questions was who is eligible uh, for these services? I do feel I kind of need to kind of go back and ask, well, who isn't, <laughs> you know? But for sure, yeah. Just just so we kind of have it. So I understand that the focus is primarily on um, post 9-11. However, do you provide services to pre 9-11? We do. If we have, um, if we have, uh, if we have, um, if a clinic has open spaces, we will definitely be able to see pre 9-11. We were set up as a post 9-11 primarily organization mm -hmm. and community um, for those post 9-11 veterans, but we've been able to expand this both to include um, our, those family members um, as well as um, now, uh, now active duty. Um, this also includes guard and reserve. Um, we say that if you've served one day in the military, you are qualified to get our care. Um, wow. It includes other than honorable discharge. We don't have any, um, any restrictions in, in terms of discharge status. And we know that those who may have other than honorable discharge may, um, may have more uh, concerns than, than others. We found that, I've found that yeah. through some research. Um, but uh, we wanna make sure that anybody who has been, who has served in the military for at least just one day um, gets our care. That's and then incredible. It, in terms of I mean, our family, yeah, please. Shannon, given yeah. that you've been around, what, five years, you said? Yes, yeah. I mean, from five years, starting with post 9-11 and then the rate in which you've expanded and continue to expand, that's huge. It is, I mean, because the need is there. And so mm -hmm. we are going to do everything that we can to help to serve, to serve that need. Um, the family members, um, we include, you know, care, caregivers, spouses, children, um, and we include caregivers as any anything related to anybody um, who is caring for uh, wounded wounded veterans, anybody who is caring for um, within a military family who is caring for children with special needs. Like it doesn't. It's a very wow. wide. Um, range of, of family members and it's whoever is uh the the veteran or the military service member considers to be um a family member um so it could be a girlfriend it could be anybody wow. who is um who is considered yeah who who the the veteran it's or like military. a safety net 
I mean, because there's so many eliminating barriers that prevent folks from getting care. That's huge. It is. And it's one of the things that I'm so, so thrilled about um, in working with this organization because we are, we have that flexibility and ability to really expand those services. Um, Just one more word on eligibility. We see, so the, um, the, the number of times that we see clients. So this is more what we call short-term therapy, Mm -hmm. um, which means that it's like 12 to 16 or so sessions, which is actually quite a bit. Um, But if we are, if somebody is coming in and, you know, needs like that really long-term, very um, immersive care, we're able to, um, to refer them to people that would be more appropriate. Um, So, but, you know, so you don't leave them hanging. We never leave anybody (laughs) hanging. No, um, no. So, uh, so that eligibility is, is that, that is a part of it. Um, However, beyond what we provide in terms of therapy, we also have um, case managers at every clinic. We have psychiatrists or nurse practitioners at every clinic, and we have outreach coordinators and people who are able to engage, for instance, with um, Elizabeth Dole or with Team Red, White, and Blue or whomever to really partner and do really fun, interesting things that any anybody can participate in. Um, and they're are those really... your community um, was it community room? Yep, exactly, exactly. I saw that. That looked so cool. So yeah, so every brick and mortar clinic has a has a specific community room. Um, we've brought in, you know, the, the Red Cross to come and do trainings. We've we've it, it, we've brought in VA to to um, provide trainings. Um, Legion, you know, the American Legion has come in and said, "Can we have a meeting here?" Yes, we we want to be a part of the fabric of that community, yeah. and that's the physical space. And here's where the it gets it gets confusing this past year is that we haven't really yeah. been able to use that. So in in lieu of that, uh, for the time being, until we can get back into the community, um, we also um, we have what's called CVN Presents, which is on mm-hmm. our website, um, and that is with our again with a lot of partners. Um, we have uh, community. Um, events that occur that are recorded, including yoga and art um, in, tr- in terms of suicide prevention training. I saw the um, expressive arts with Siva yes. and all that. Yeah, yep. that looks really fun. Yeah. So we, again, we, we really wanted to make sure that we were still connected as much as possible. And of course, you know, the pandemic has made things extremely hard and at the same mm-hmm. time, it's also really helped to expand our reach and our ability to engage with more people who might be coming in for um, or doing things more virtually. That's awesome. Um, quick question. Yeah. I do want to ask you a question about, well, I got a series of questions to be quite mm-hmm. frank, but, um, you know, kind of rewinding a bit on, you know, who you do serve. I think I heard you say something about active duty. Can you tell me a little bit yes. more about uh, who act, who you mean by active duty and when, sure. when might they be able to get services? Yeah. So, um, so active duty, we, as I said, are expanding, um, mostly in the next month, um, with, you know, a, it just takes a little longer in some, in some mm-hmm. uh, geographical areas, but there are definitely already some clinics that already see, um, active duty service members. So these are, you know, guard and reserve who have been activated. We can see them while they're activated, which we weren't able to do before. Wow. These are those who are on base. Um, and it, it, as I said, it is all through TRICARE. So it's similar okay. to the way that you would see another community member or um, uh, service provider within your community through, through TRICARE. Very cool. So that kind of brings me to another question as far as cost. You know, we got to yeah. get to the, to the money part. So what is the cost for, um, you know, not only a service member, but about their families? How much does that cost for a family to for be sure. seen at one of the clinics? Yeah, so we um, we never want cost to be a barrier. I want to start out by saying that. Um, so we will take TRICARE, we take um, the VA Choice, um, and we take insurance, other insurances. Um, if you don't have insurance, you don't have to pay. 
If you um, are struggling with the co-payment, we will work with you. Um, and so again, if that is ever a concern, we don't want that to be any sort of concern. We have that flexibility. We have the resources to be able to serve anybody regardless of their ability to pay. So that's a very important piece of, piece of what we do. That's wonderful to hear. I, that's, um, that's really and, great. And that's for kids and that's for family and that's for, um, you know, caregivers, clearly spouses. Um, I also want to stress, because I know we're talking to a lot of caregivers right now, mm -hmm. um, that you don't have to come in if you're just, if it's because of a caregiving struggle, or if it's because of something that is going on with your military family member, it can be something totally different. Just the fact that you are a, are a family member and are just, you need help with something, um, that's what we, we wanna help serve. If you have, I always give the example of like the eight-year-old kid that just, you know, PCS across the country is really struggling, has a lot of anxiety, but it really has nothing to do with the parent's um, service. We will be still be able to see that eight-year-old child and really help help them get through whatever they're they're coping with. I'm really glad that you brought that up. Thank you, uh, because I mean, so often we feel like all of you know, even when it's services that are meant for us, it's yeah. usually in relation to our service member, yeah. um, in providing support to our service member, um, yeah. in issues relating to caring for our service provide or service um, member, but. Yeah. really, we also need to put a focus on our own needs. And sometimes that's yeah. not related to or just impacted exactly. by. Yes, exactly. So I mean, stress, I don't know if anybody else yeah. out there has a lot of that, <laughs> but for right sure. here. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And once um, we also, uh, uh, we also provide um, when we're in person, um, mm -hmm. we're able to also provide childcare for the individual. So if I, if I was going in to see somebody, I would be able to drop my kid off, you know, two doors down within the clinic for, um, to have somebody watch them during that hour, because we just don't want any barriers to care. And so we have, we provide yeah. childcare as well. You've thought of it all. Wow. Okay. I mean, huge fan. I <laughs> we, mean, I was kind of a yeah. huge fan already, but you know. <laughs> well, we tr yeah, we are. Um, it, it, sometimes it sounds almost too good to be true, but in fact, most of it is pretty. Is just it is pretty what good, it is. Pretty true. It's pretty yeah. great and true. Yeah. That's awesome. That's so incredible. So, with that said, because you know we've talked about the fact that there are clinics across the country. Um, and it's, it's a network um, of different mm -hmm. clinics. Um, what, so I, I know that you mentioned that there is telehealth available. Yes. Um, but is, what if somebody has not utilized telehealth before? Maybe they're not close to a, um, a clinic. They're in the same state. They're not close to it. And yep. so their option is gonna be telehealth. Yep. Um, what does that look like? It looks like this, Shana. It looks like me <laughs> and you having this call and like video conferencing. I mean, this is basically it. Um, we are so glad we provided telehealth care before the pandemic. Mm -hmm. So we were about 25% of our clients were seen through telehealth. Um, you know, I live in the Washington DC area and we thought that a lot of the telehealth would be coming from a lot of our rural um, rural families and veterans, but in fact, lots of them were coming in through telehealth, um, through urban places like DC to like our DC clinic, um, because the traffic was so lousy, like, you know, so it's just, it, it's super accessible for anybody. Yeah. So what, so what does it look like? It looks like two people talking, um, over a video chat. And we know through research that has been done way in the past, um, that it still works. Like it's still, wow. it's, it's still, you can still do very effective therapy, um, through a back and forth over a video screen. Um, and so almost, uh, you know, hundred percent of our services right now are telehealth services, mm -hmm. um, which we're thrilled about. We're excited to get back into, the, the clinics and the, the physical space. But that said, like 
a, a client who lives in Pittsburgh, and when we look, I'll show you the map in a little bit, but like a client who lives in Pittsburgh can now access um, care from a clinician in Philadelphia. And um, don't you don't have to drive, like that we have some yeah. people who, who do the do the therapy through like over their lunch break in mm -hmm. their car, like, you know, yeah. um, it's just, it makes it so much more accessible and mobile. I think that, I mean, I don't want to speak for all the caregivers here, but I feel like that really resonates because, you know, it, it's not always an option to leave the home exactly. uh, as much as we want to, it would be a nice break, Exactly. but that's not always an option. Go into another room. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So I feel like that's once again, another, you know, barrier just kind of taken off of our plate so that, you know, we can take care of ourselves as well. Yes, um, exactly. So I know, um, so I, I know you mentioned that once again, I'm keep on rewinding to that, um, you know, the eligibility who you're uh, providing services to. So when a uh, client receives services at a Cohen clinic, mm -hmm. um, let's say whether they are, you know, a veteran or active duty service member, um, is confidentially confidentiality guaranteed um, or it, it, will yes. they see their records? Um, confident, we can guarantee confidentiality um, as any community provider can. You know, okay. certainly we, we have in our, you know, if, if, if somebody threatens to harm themselves or others, Mm -hmm. that's the, and that's, a, that's, that's just the, across the board with anybody. Mm -hmm. um, and in terms of active duty, um, as because we're going through the TRICARE process, mm -hmm. um, it's my understanding that that maintains a level of confidentiality that's different from if you were seeking care um, yeah. on base. On um, yes, exactly. So, um, so yes, we can guarantee, we can guarantee that. That's fantastic. Yeah. So, let's say, you know, okay, sold, I'm in, let's yep. do this. You know, how quickly will I receive mental health care at yeah. a local clinic? So um, you can call any of your local clinics or those within your state, or even those within some adjoining states. We've really been working hard. Um, licenses for, for clinicians um, mm -hmm. across state is a complicating complicated process. Um, VA has been able to, um, to, to do it very much more easily because they are seen as more of a federal network right now mm -hmm. um, and a government network, which is awesome. So um, we're hoping that we'll be able to see, um, to see more and more clients who are in those different states beyond the 19 states that we're physically in. And I think we're, we are, have licensed providers in about 26 um, or so states. And okay. we're looking to expand that nationally within the next year so that anybody in any state um, will be able to come in. Was that your question? I, I can't even That was one that. of my questions. Okay, good. No, good that one. was all, you, okay. you got a few in one spot. I oh, mean, good. talk about efficiency. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so that kind of brings me to another one. So, um, you know, when somebody does decide, okay, I want to give this a shot, right? Yes. Um, how do they go about receiving this care? Do we, they call yep. a general number? Do they look for their most, their local clinic? What yep. does that look like? So I think that the easiest way to do it is to go on to our website, which is cohenveteransnetwork.org. Um, and we'll show that y'all. It'll you. be on there. <laughs> and there's a thing that says, locate your clinic. Um, you can either locate the clinic. You'll see the, um, uh, you'll see the, the, the yeah, the description of it with all of the information and you just pick up the phone and you call them. You can also go through um, a site called the Back to Better site um, on our, on our um, clinic website, on our okay. website where you can fill out a form and somebody from your area will call you back. So you can Very fill out cool. a form that says like, I'm a veteran and I you know, live in Alaska. And then somebody from our Alaska clinic um, will reach out to you. Then what happens okay. um, if you call or if you um, uh, or if you write and they call you back? Um, we will go through an intake process, and so we at mm -hmm. every clinic we have an intake coordinator um, who goes through a list, a, a series of questions about what's going on, um, how we can help, 
making sure that um, that this is the right place for you um, to come and get your care? Do you need help with your family? Do you need help with just you? Um, and then from that point, and we can set that up typically within a few days of the nice. first phone call. Unless, Shana, unless anybody is in or needs urgent care, like we'll see okay. you right away. We're, we have that, those, that capacity. So if somebody is in crisis, we can meet up and, and, and tag team and, and meet with somebody right away. That's, that's a no-brainer. But if it's a longer period of time, um, and, and then for most of our clinics, um, we have capacity to really start your first session within the first two weeks usually within the, at around the same time that the, the, um, um, that the client wants. Um, so, and there are some, there are a couple of clinics where um, we are looking for more clinicians because um, there's just such a need. Um, and is. with those, you know, we will certainly, they continue, we'll continue to triage with them, stay in touch. Um, and it's usually within a few weeks or so but those that's are fewer incredible. and far between. We have a lot of openings at this point. Well, that's, that's, wanna, that's awesome. I'm sorry, yeah. go ahead. Sorry, and I also wanna say that if, like let's say I was going in and I sit down with the intake coordinator, I get my first couple of sessions and then I'm realizing, wow, I could really like, and the clinician and I are realizing I could really use a family, some family therapy as well. Mm -hmm. We are able to provide that concurrent therapy. So we can see, and we do, I mean, a lot of the times mm -hmm. we'll see one individual client at the same time that we're seeing, um, the spouse and sometimes the child individually or the individual client, and then a separate therapist who's really working in the family. Um, so we have, and, um, I know you're going to ask this anyway, but <laughs> to say it. and let's say you finish care and, you know, things are going well, and then six months later, the rug is pulled out from under you or something happens or- No way, not in the caregiving happens. world. Oh, yeah. <laughs> We're once and done. No, um, you can come back as, as often as you need to. We, um, Very cool. we see a lot of clients over and over again. Well, that's great to know that, you know, folks can, can rely on you, you know, yes. when that rough patch does hit and yeah. you know where to go. Exactly. Um, now, one last question on that end, which is, what if I don't like my therapist? Can I request a new one? You know, the therapy, you have to connect with your therapist. That's one of the hallmarks of it. And so if, you're, if you aren't connecting with your current therapist, we'll work together and figure out potentially, you know, another therapist to connect to. Um, you are not stuck with um, a therapist. Of, I don't know, you know, I think there are certainly, there are certainly examples of when that's happened. It, it happens mm -hmm. all the time. Yeah. Um, you want to make sure that you have that connection. And if you don't have it, then we'll figure out something, something else. Sometimes it's just not a right fit and that's It okay. just doesn't jive. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And that's, and that's okay. not anything against the individual or the therapist. It's exactly. just, you don't have the same style and it's not yep. going to be as effective if you, unless you guys just jive and you, you have that connection. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. That's awesome. So, um, I know that we're, we're, um, getting low on time here, but I do know that we have a few different, you know, uh, locations throughout the country that, yes. um, Cohen is currently located at. So, if anybody can see this pretty picture, there are quite a few. <laughs> there are. So those are our brick and mortar clinics. Um, our um, and that in with the red. So those are open. Um, we are, uh, or at least they the physical clinic is almost open. Like our lot in Oklahoma clinic is almost open, but we are still we're seeing people telehealth through telehealth already. Okay. So it doesn't matter that the brick and mortar isn't open yet. Um, we just recently opened Jacksonville, North Carolina. Um, we are um, going to be opening in Colorado Springs and Camp Pendleton, LA, Fairbanks. Um, but these, and I, I wanna make sure, and then, oh, and then you see that big line over it all, that's the virtual network, which is where we really wanna make sure that anybody can get care from any state. So we're, we're really working hard to figure out how best to do that. Um, if you aren't in, in these states and you do need care, 
please reach out and see um, either through your most, either through the closest clinic, or you can just reach out to our info um, mm -hmm. website and we can make sure that to know that if there are people within an, an adjacent, within a closer clinic mm -hmm. that might be licensed, we, we may well be able to see. To you. find a solution. Yeah, exactly. exactly. I think the theme I'm hearing here is flexibility. Yes. <laughs> you know, yep. person centered, <laughs> you know, exactly, exactly. We are only here to help. Like this is just, we are, I feel so lucky to be part of an organization where I can just say that we aren't looking to, you know, we, we are certainly, we aren't looking to make money. We're looking certainly to sustain ourselves over time, which is mm -hmm. why we need to take insurance. Um, so, you know, Mr. Cohen's money will has gone so, so far, but it will only yeah. go so, so far. So we have a right. sustainment um, strategy, um, but at the same time, that's what we're, that's really what we're looking to do is just to help people. Very cool. I love that. Um, and I just, I am so appreciative of you guys for, you know, being here in this, um, in this sphere to be able to provide such amazing supports. Um, at this time, I would love to open up the floor to uh, questions from our community, anything that we may have missed. Um, so one uh, question from our community is, uh, COVID has impacted my mental health, and I know the same has happened for others. Um, has CVN adjusted any of their strategies or offerings with the impact of COVID in mind? That's a great question. Absolutely. That's a huge, huge question. Um, yeah. Yes, we have been um, very engaged with our um, community and our partners who are really focused to um, including like Boost Our Families and the White Oak Collaborative and all these other groups who are who, who do the surveys about how is COVID impacting our lives. We also did a, a pretty major survey last year about um, about how COVID is, is, has impacted, um, impacted our lives. And then we continue to kind of train ourselves and train everybody else yeah. about how to manage that. Um, you know, this is, this is unlike any other, any other time before. Yeah. Um, and so we, we are Long ourselves we adapting and exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, but that's the best because that, that's how, you know, that what you are do doing and what you're learning is the most relevant to you yes, at the time. Exactly, exactly. Um, so our next question is, um, do you provide services on how to reconcile caregiving at a young age? And it oh, doesn't for sure. say yeah. whether or not for children, but yeah. also a lot of our, our uh, care providers. And yeah, care spouses, providers, absolutely, yeah. partners, for sure. Yeah, I mean, caregiving is um, is a it's huge and it's i i continue to learn so much more by um through this through these incredible these incredible communities that you all yeah. have and are in um about how how the, how life-changing this is and that's an understatement mm -hmm. um and so for sure we see a lot of um of clients who are much younger um caregivers and are having to cope with this either, um, uh, you know, massive transition in their lives um, and life change and grief and, you know, yeah. all of those emotions that come into it, grief of what life was supposed to be like and what it is now. And, and, and that reconciliation is such an important word um, of yeah. what that, what that is. So um, absolutely. Yes. That's incredible. And um, you remember that whole too good to be true thing? Yeah. We have another question, um, and I think yes. we need to verify that this is true and good. Yeah. Do the clinics provide childcare? Yes, it, and so it is, yes. So we contract, we'll either contract out the, um, the, the babysitting or the childcare, but they come into the clinics. And so, you know, we have like our clinic in Silver Spring has, um, has one, uh, has two rooms that have the, um, the, the mirror, the, um, the darkened mirror. Um, mm -hmm. so there, and it goes, it looks into the child room. 
So the child room is, we have at least one child room. We have teen rooms um, in most of the clinics where there, there are toys and there are games. And, you know, so, um, so that clinic will either have one of their staff members who is available at the time of the therapy um, to come in. They're all trained childcare providers or we contract out, but yes, it's actually in the clinic where your kid is right next door. Very um, cool. Wow. And that's, I think that's, at least for me, um, that's a huge relief because sometimes yeah. it also can be hard to just feel right about taking care of, we get that caregiver guilt. Um, of course. Of <laughs> it's course. like mom guilt yeah. on steroids. Yep. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. And, it, you know, the, and the childcare is totally free. I mean, it's just, um, it's kind of a brilliant um, addition to, again, like, eliminating barriers, yeah. eliminating barriers to care so that somebody can't be like, oh, I can't make it in this week because I can't, you know, find somebody to watch my kid. Well, guess what? We're all yeah, <laughs> Check. <Handled. Yeah. laughs> That's awesome. So I think one of um, my final questions here, um, okay, we, we have another one coming in, oh, but sure. um, Another question we have, and I think this is an action. Thank you so much, whomever asked this, because this is a good question. Yeah. Um, does CVN support services in other language uh, languages, such as Spanish-speaking caregivers, all that fun stuff? Yeah, I mean, yeah, for sure. In um, in the communities that have um, large numbers of of Spanish-speaking people, like in El Paso and San Antonio and other places, mm -hmm. um, we will always have at least one. Uh, one clinician who is bilingual. Um, and um, so we're able to do that. Um, in terms of, I don't, that's a, it's a great question. And it's one I will have to look back on, but it's definitely something to ask each local clinic about whether or not they have somebody who mm -hmm. is Spanish speaking or a different, a different language. Um, because okay. we want to so again, just ask directly. Sure just ask directly. Exactly. And, okay. um, you know, well, we can figure out translation services if there isn't somebody. Um, but yeah. Perfect. Okay. Um, we have a lot of great questions, I think. Awesome. Bring are, it. Yeah. These I'm loving great. this. Yeah. I know I bring it on. Let's go. Um, so let's see. Uh, how does CVN think about uh, the older caregivers? Uh, sometimes this includes trauma of putting your veteran into a home um, or more care coming into the home, you know, things such as that. Um, there's a loss for the caregiver and for the family. Um, how do you guys, you know, feel about that and or address that? Is that something that's within your scope? For sure. I mean, absolutely. This is, uh, I mean, it can be just so, such a devastating time. Mm -hmm. and, um, and so looking at it through, either the lens, the trauma lens, um, mm -hmm. you know, using like our, you know, one of the evidence-based practices, whether it's like cognitive behavioral therapy or cognitive processing therapy, all of our clinicians are trained in these, these therapies, yeah. um, to cope, um, with, with this massive change to cope with the emotions behind the potential guilt to cope with adjustment to having all these people coming into your home yeah. and having to uh, the stress around around that and um that this is exactly transitions this is yes one of the premier transitions that somebody will be going through are what we what we really really can help with is and what that looks like so um i i also want to um want to stress that our providers are so many of them are um our veterans and family members or spouses of oh, veterans wow. themselves and um, as well as uh, service members and um, mm -hmm. active duty guard and reserve. Um, and so there, I, I feel like there is a heightened understanding about these difficulties. Um, similarly, military cultural competence. So the specific, um, yeah, specific language and um, and really understanding of um, the military um, as a whole and the veteran yeah. community 
Um, we are we have a huge program at the beginning in, tra in training that everybody is required to take. And then every month or you know a couple of months, we will um, have a different uh, subject where uh, clinical, whether it's clinical or um, engaging with partners um, who might be able to help with anything related to military. We don't want therapy to just be a client having to sit and explain what it's like to be yeah. in the military or what it's like to be a military family member or a caregiver. Um, That's just, you know, it's not good for anybody's time. And it isn't. I'm, and at the same time, knowing that everyone has their own story, but to be mm -hmm. able to use it within that, within that context um, and it is, is, is really important to us. That's huge. And that's, I mean, that's a, that's a big barrier. Once again, that's lifted just because, yep. you know, you don't want to have to re-explain or just, you know, start at military culture 101. Um, yep. That's not what you're there for. Exactly. Uh, no. That's huge. That's awesome. Um, so another question we've got is what about an adult child um, or a veteran that served pre 9-11 that needs mental health resources? Would they qualify for support? So this is so basically we're asking about pre 911 family members of somebody who is a pre 911 veteran. It looks like it yeah, looks it looks like, like an it, adult yeah. child of a veteran that yep. served pre 911. Pre 911. Yeah, I mean I would give give your local clinic a call and see mm -hmm. um because um as we are ramping up our services, you know, I it's it broadens. Very, it, it broadens it. Okay. Um, and I, hate, I, I'm sorry that it, I don't have a, a clearer like yes or no, no. Um, answer, but it really depends on the local um, clinic's ability to to see somebody. It may be that that um, depending on what what the concern may be, it may take a little longer, um, or they may have to refer you to somebody else. At the same time, some of our clinics just have a lot of space right now. And, um, and so just call whichever uh, clinic you think um, is closest to you or wh whomever you're discussing or you're, whomever you're talking about. Um, yeah. Worst and, they can say is no. I mean, exactly. but it, it sounds like everybody's trying their best to make it happen. Exactly, yep. And from what I understand, if you cannot, that they that you have folks who can try to connect you with those so, who can exactly yep incredible i try i'm trying to say amazing or awesome a little bit less because i know i'm <laughs> i feel like i'm on repeat here because i mean just this is exciting this is huge it's, it's um good. it's so many of the barriers that we run into uh when trying when we know that we're ready that it's yep. time that something needs to happen yes for um, sure we have another question, um, and it looks like this may be our last one. Um, do you see forensic veterans? So, for example, someone um, possibly those with or those with legal charges yeah. that um, are against them currently? Absolutely, absolutely, we do. Um, we work with our veterans, our local veterans treatment courts. We work with um, our the veterans um, justice outreach programs within our communities. Um, we um, are in a couple of spaces, even talking with prisons and jails and seeing how we might be able to work with veterans who are currently incarcerated. Wow. Um, certainly, we will see if any family member of anybody who um, is a family member of somebody who's a veteran who's incarcerated. But, um, but yes, that is, a, again, if somebody served in the military even one day, um, we, we don't do like, um, legal assessments. Um, that's not right. part of our purview, but it's certainly if somebody needs to get through, manage whatever is going on in their lives. Um, we, we want to be able to do that. And honestly, um, legal, legal problems are high on that list, um, in terms yeah. of what people are, are coping with and, and how to manage and get through those. So, yes. That's great. That's great. So I, it looks like that is the, that's the end of our community questions. Um, I really appreciate, you know, you taking my questions that you're taking the community's questions. I think that this was really enlightening. I learned a lot of things that I didn't know. Um, 
and I mean, I'm already a big fan. So I mean, <laughs> this, I mean, you've, you've provided us with so much, you know, helpful information. My pleasure. Um, so thank you. Thank you for joining and us. Please, please, please um, spread the word um, to your friends and colleagues and people across the country about this. Um, yes. You are as caregivers, I mean, you're so important and we need you <laughs> and um and you could just uh it it really is an honor to be able to um to work with all of you and work within your community um and we hear you i think that that's one thing is yeah. we hear you yeah it, that does help that validation and recognizing that we do have our own innate importance and that we do yes. deserve uh, supports. Oh, Thank you. That's an understatement. Yes, for sure. <laughs> yes, but it had to be said. <laughs> yeah. So I'm going to move into, um, you know, our prize winners. I promised that earlier. Um, I do want to thank everybody who participated with us in uh, the chats and in the comments. Um, we love being able to interact with you guys. Um, and so from our HHCC community, uh, we have he Kelly Hunsucker. Uh, she is our winner from HHCC, and we're going to be reaching out to you to get your information to send you some goodies. Um, from Zoom, we have Julie Lasser, Lasser and Naomi Thompson. So we will be reaching out to you. Um, I know that Megan will, uh, you know, reach out to you in the chat. Colton will reach out to you, Kelly, in the community, and we'll get that good stuff headed your way. Um, so it looks like we've covered most of our questions. I had some curveballs ready for you, but for the sake of time, I decided, you know what? I like you. I won't throw those at you. Um, but... Anytime, Shana. <laughs> <laughs> and, and honestly, anybody else um, who's participating, please feel free to um, reach out to Shana. Let me know, um, uh, you know, how to, you can, anybody can yeah. get in touch with me. So, yeah, yeah. So definitely reach out to us. If you can't reach out to her, I will reach out to her on your behalf. You know, once again, barrier reduction. I'm loving this. I'm loving this. Um, so thank you again. Um, if you are joining us via Zoom uh, and you are not already registered with an HHCC, that's our Hidden Heroes Caregiver Community, um, we would really like to encourage you to join this Facebook group. Uh, this will give you updates on upcoming C3 episodes. It's also going to give you access to, access to resources, um, you know, not only those shared by us, but also from within the community um, and just a group of encouraging individuals that you can lean on for support. Um, for our group of inclusive, I'm sorry, once again, um, be on the lookout for follow-up email. Um, and this is also going to include the recording of today's webinar. Uh, it's also going to include Caitlin's resources, uh, organization info, um, and a link to register with Hidden Heroes for those who may not already be registered. So again, thank you everyone for joining us today. A big thanks to our partners at Wounded Warrior Project and the U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs for supporting the series. Uh, we hope you enjoyed today's C3. Stay in touch and have a wonderful day. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>